Hello, and thank you for watching this video on how to iterate through all AWS accounts in an AWS organization with .NET. My name is Carlos Santos, and I'm a Microsoft Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. Many customers have found themselves managing multiple AWS accounts as they have scaled up their use of AWS. AWS Organizations is a service that helps you centrally govern your environment as you grow and scale your workloads on AWS. Whether you're a growing startup or a large enterprise, Organizations helps you control access, compliance, and security, and share resources across your AWS accounts and centrally managed billing. Using AWS Organizations, you can automate account creation, create groups of accounts that reflect your business needs, and apply policies to these groups for governance. These policies centrally control the use of AWS services down to the API level across multiple accounts. Additionally, you can configure central logging of all actions performed across your organization using AWS CloudTrail and centrally aggregate data for rules that you've defined using AWS Config, enabling you to audit your environment for compliance and react quickly to changes. Through integrations with other AWS services, you can use organizations to define central configurations and resource sharing across accounts in your organization. You can also simplify billing by setting up a single payment method for all of your AWS accounts. AWS Organizations is available to all AWS customers at no additional charge. Here we see the AWS Organizations structure that we'll be working with in this example. It is based off of the best practices for organizational units with AWS Organizations blog post, which was published on July 2020. The AWS Organizations root has four child organizational units, or OUs for short. An OU is a container for accounts with a root and can contain other OUs. This enables you to create a hierarchy that represents an upside down tree with a root at the top and branches of OUs that reach down, ending in accounts that are the leaves of the tree. An OU can have exactly one parent, and currently each account can be a member of exactly one OU. Two of the child OUs depicted, security and infrastructure, are ones that we recommend and what you see categorized as foundational organizational units. The others are additional OUs we typically see customers use. The Workloads OU also has two child OUs, SDLC and PROD, which are used to separate non-production and production accounts, respectively. All of the OUs in this hierarchy have at least one account. While this is the structure we'll be using today, you should create OUs only when the difference in policies that need to be applied to accounts dictate their need. Let's take a look at how to iterate through all of the AWS accounts in this organization. You have a couple of options to get the list of accounts in an AWS organization. List accounts gets you a list of all accounts without the OU structure. If you need the full graph, you can do this with a combination of the list routes, list accounts for parent, and list organizational units for parent APIs. To start the traversal, use the list routes API. Once you have the routes ID, you can begin to walk the hierarchy one level at a time using the list accounts for parent and list organizational units for parent APIs. One item to keep in mind is that these APIs can only be called from the organization's master account or by a member account that is a delegated administrator. Let's see this in action. Here I have a .NET Core console application that we'll use to make the API calls. The first thing we'll do is add the NuGet package for AWS organizations. The name of the package is AWS SDK.organizations. We'll click the Install button and add the package to our project. As you can see, we get prompted to also add the AWS SDK.core NuGet package. We need this package because it's a dependency. Now that we've added the packages we need, let's run the application and get an idea of what the output is before we walk through the code. 
The first output is a flattened list of AWS accounts without the AWS organization's structure. In the second output, we can see the organizational units denoted by the OU prefix and the accounts which have the A prefix. All right, let's take a closer look. In the main method, we can see that how the output is created is abstracted into two methods, the print flat account list method and the print hierarchy method. Looking at print flat account list, we can see that the fallback credentials factory is used to get the credentials. Those credentials are then provided to the Amazon organization's client classes constructor. Once the client is instantiated, we can make the call to the list accounts API. One item to know is that the AWS SDK methods follow a pretty consistent pattern of using classes to represent requests and responses, even when an API doesn't take any parameters, as is the case with the list accounts API. Let's run the code and see it in action. As you can see, the response class contains a list of accounts. We use this list to iterate through all of the accounts in the organization and print them to the console. If we use the object browser to see the account class's members, you can spot that there are no members related to organizations. That is why we can't get the organization structure when we use the list accounts method. Okay, let's move on to the print hierarchy method. Because we're walking a tree structure, we're going to use a little bit of recursion. The pattern is very similar to what we saw in the print flat account list method. We get the credentials and we use them to create the client. One difference is that in this case, we use the list roots method to get the organization's root. Currently, an organization can only have one root, and so we use the first or default method to get that root. Once we have the root, we use that to start walking the structure using the print organizational unit method. We print out the accounts first. This time, the request class does have a parameter named parent ID, which in this case represents the ID of the OU. We use the list accounts for parent API to get the list of accounts in that OU. The accounts model return is the same one we saw earlier with the list accounts method. And just like last time, we iterate to print the list of accounts. Once we're done printing the account information, we again create a request class with the parent ID parameter. This time, we use the list organizational units for parent API to get the OUs that we'll continue to walk through. We pass each OU's ID and recursively call the print organizational unit method. I'll let the program continue so they can print the AWS accounts and the OU structure. As you can see, the AWS SDK organization's NuGet package makes it easy to retrieve information about your AWS organization. In this video, we saw how we can use the AWS SDK to get the list of AWS accounts within an organization, either as a flat list or maintaining the OU structure. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thank you for watching.